Hey there, I'm Jamie from Cruising the Land, and behind me I have the final reveal of the Land Cruiser, the diesel, so it's a JDM right-hand drive, and this is the fourth video, the fourth installment, which is the full reveal of everything that's been done. It's all the accessories, because video number one, we did the wheels right here. Video number two, we did the rear bumper. Video number three, we did the Prinsu roof rack, and all those are like a little bit detailed if you wanna, you know, if you're planning to do the same thing on your uh, 80 series build. But this is the final video, the whole walkthrough. So before we give it a 360, and there's lots to look at, lots to talk about, um, I just wanted to share with you that if you're in the Southern California marketplace um, and you got a cool rig, like a Land Cruiser or a Defender or a, ranger a ford ranger or a bronco or anything cool and you want to do a video instead of cars and coffee let's call it cars and whiskey so let's face it those starbucks and the latte guys that's that's for the mclarens the ferraris the lambos but it's you know cars and whiskey so let's do that um so if you're local just hit hit a dm uh and we'll get in touch and we could do a video uh, over at cars and coffee uh i got a couple spots we can film or anywhere so hit me up i think uh, the subscribers love cool stories not just the vehicle but the person and what they do with it and you know a little bit more um personal with the trucks right because they're unique and i think the owners are also unique i mean you look at all these different 80s they don't look the same every 80 is completely different because there's so many things you can do to them different suspensions different bumpers different lift heights everything so i think each and every single one takes its own character so and also let's you know i as far as subscribers we have subscribers here in the us which is awesome right but we got people commenting from australia from the netherlands from germany from venezuela colombia so hit the like let's let's show the rest of the world that hey you know even though we only got 20 percent of these 80 series here in the us we love them just as much so hit the like button let's see what the algorithm does with uh with YouTube, which is owned by Google, and see if we can come up in the searches and get a ton of views from uh, our friends abroad. So let's start with the walk around. And I'll just flip this around. All right, so let me get into the light here. I'll just walk around the vehicle. And then we'll go into detail here in a second. So just a full 360. I wanted to have half of it in the sun and then half of it in the shade here. Because as you know, black cars look better in the shade. Let me wipe down my screen too so we don't get that reflection. Okay, that should be better. So, We've already done a video on the wheels, and one of the additions I did here is I changed that delta wheel back here for a fuel. So this is non-bead lock, so this is a fake bead locker, whereas the other wheels, that's the real deal. Those are bead lockers. So with, I don't know, 24 of those. And these are custom. What I did is powder coated that gunmetal, and this is black. And uh, if you remember in the wheel video, I was asking everybody, hey, do we go this moss green? Do we go army green? Or do we go nothing at all? And basically tabulated the votes and this is what we went with. So it's the light green. But the back, we're just leaving it all black. So another thing we added here is the fuel tank. So this fuel tank is huge. Usually people put like three tanks back here. I just went for the big 50 liter tank totally massive um let's get a side profile and with the sleeve bumper you get this cool thing too right it's the strap that holds it in so basically goes down you, you can get it out of here so there's there's already a slot there with it which is pretty darn cool and that back jerry can holder is good for all sleeves because it just fits their ladder I also put a light in here. It's not plugged in yet, but to me it was perfect because it's actually helping hold in the jerry can. So not only do I have the strap, got some recovery straps here uh, tucked away and it's kind of holding everything together. So we also put on the action tracks and I did it in green. So like the army green color to kind of start 
getting this all together because that's the third color, right? We got black, we got silver, and we got green. So it ties it all in and check out this custom painted high lift jack. So the high lift jack, I have a video on how to paint these because when you get these delivered, either they're already starting to rust or because it's like a cast iron or steel, rusts easily. So if you chip it, if you cut it, uh, scratch it, it's going to rust. So basically, um, hit it with Rust-Oleum and then you'll never have a problem. And I use uh, what Rust-Oleum is called um, cast iron, I think it's called, that, the color. So it uh, just looks good. I think it's a great color. All right, so there's the rear. And the action tracks that you see there, if you're in Southern Cal or nearby, because I can ship, I do have those. I've got a full pallet of them. Uh, cool guy out of middle of the U.S. in Kansas. And they make an amazing board. And, uh, well, I thought I'd help his business out. So I've got them here. And uh, for a good price, a good deal. So hit me up if you want a set. Okay, just had to pause there for a second to let a neighbor out of his driveway. Drive away. So another thing we were voting on, or at least I asked uh, subscribers to chime in, do we go no sticker, turbo, or slee? The vote unanimously was, was the turbo, because that's period correct. That's what's supposed to be there. That's not the original sticker it came with. This truck has been painted black in Japan, and let me tell you, it's a 10 out of 10 paint job. It's phenomenal. Um, so I bought that sticker, so you can buy those online to get your diesel current. But you know what I did? I saved the slee. And the slee is just sitting there, kind of like an Easter egg. So if the sun hits it right, it pops. If not, it's kind of it's kind of hidden behind the, the fuel tank. So I just have it there for fun. Why not? Saved the sticker. And uh, there it is. So And it's on the window, right? So before people start commenting, it's sacrilege. How dare you put that on a Land Cruiser? That is on the truck. That's part of the truck. But you know what? People put stickers. You can put Land Cruiser Club and Southern California Land Cruiser Association, all that on your windows, of course. So the slee is on the window. So give me a break. No comments on that, please. Only if they're good. <laughs> All right, um, up top on the Prinsu, I think I had the basket on before. I can't remember in the video, but so I added the basket and that's the non powder coated bar that I put back there just cause you know, the truck has color. So I figured I would leave it um, silver up there to kind of work with, you know, the, the molding here, the different gray color, silver color. So another thing I did, I polished, um, the side steps. So yeah, these are, uh, you know, the side step. It's not, that's not a slider. I don't think I'm gonna go rock crawling in this and it's got enough height for overlanding. So I left it like that because I really like the aluminum and it really polishes up nice. So easy to do. You know what you do? You get triple zero or quadruple zero steel wool and then your favorite, I used Pro 40 on this, uh, either Blue Magic or, or uh, Pro 40 and polish away. Crazy, crazy little side story. I once, like a year ago, I did a video on polishing aluminum wheels. I had some cool old school 15 inch to put on an older Land Cruiser. And um, I was about to polish them and I said, oh, let me break out the video camera and at least I'll, I'll share it with what I'm doing. Well, that video has now gotten 400,000 views. It's number one in Google. Uh, when you go to Google and you type in how to polish aluminum wheels, it's number one. It gets I don't know, it gets like 500 views to 1,000 views a day. It's hilarious. Like, you know, me, this, this schmuck here, all of a sudden becomes the guru on how to polish wheels. It's pretty funny. But I did break out all my polishes I had over the years and compared them all and tried to debunk some myths like using Coca-Cola and, and aluminum foil, that sort of thing. So it was funny. Anyhow, I digress. So there's the fuel, those are fuel zephyrs, if anybody wants to know. And of course the Japanese, you get the cool little mirror on the side here. The front bar, I decided to keep this front bar because I'm not a big fan with these bolt-on bull bars. I'd rather ARB or an AOE from Lake Forest here or Iron Man. But the reason why I kept it, this is a Joust bar. This is made in Japan. So I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it says Joust right there yeah it does pick it up 
and uh, I polished this. I compounded it, and because the bumper's black, so black on black, I think it looks great. So I decided to leave it and keep it, you know, uh, with its heritage. You know, that joust bar's probably been on there ever since she was brand new in Japan. So, more accessories. So as we did the moss green here, I ended up taking the caps for the Hellas, and these are black and white. So the white really looked out of place here on the truck. So I ended up uh, online, you could buy the sticker. So I bought the Hella sticker and uh, this is wrap because I had it all green and I put this sticker on where I placed it and it was just too much green. So I put this um, metallic gray wrap on top of the paint, that green paint. So you got the green, that's paint, and I, I actually um, Plasti dipped it first. Plasti dipped it, then I painted on top of the Plasti dip. So I can go, I can go right back to the the way this looked. That's vinyl, and then that's a Hella sticker. And I think that turned out great because it ties in the colors. Other accessories, and wait till we get inside because that's some of the most fun. These are to hold. You know, you can use this to hold different things, but primarily for the high lift jack. So. Uh, these also rust, so I had a set that rusted. Um, this is supposed to be red. I painted it because I didn't want to have anything bright red popping on the outside of the truck, and I painted that with that same rust-oleum that's on the hijack. And I'm not sure, you know, a lot of people know Prinsu roof racks, but here's a, a load panel. So it slides between, you know, those little little spots that you uh those little rails so it slides in between and it sits in nice and tight so we'll load some stuff up there all right what else did we do in an upcoming video i am going to change the suspension i'll uh, i'll tell you about that in a second and yeah due to popular demand in my other videos they're like how come you're not cranking over this diesel we want to hear it i will do that so Hang tight, we're almost there. All right, what I wanted to show you with this clear glass is what we got going on inside. So let's open up the back, which we can do with one hand with their new system over at Slee. Gotta like that. All right. So this does have, uh, what's pretty cool is the guy from Japan. This is all wood. I just, I had this vinyl and I just wanted to cover it to kind of get rid of that, rid of that wood look. So I still have to finish that off. And I put this green um, sheet, same kind of color green as that, our high lift jack and all, and the board. So I got a black board on the inside if you didn't notice that. So when I sell these boards, you can mix and match. You can get two different colors, which is kind of cool because if you ever want to flip it and have black on the outside you know or a red or an orange or a tan and a black whatever you want uh, you can just pick pick your colors all right so on the inside we did a delta barrier and i love it and it secures up here in your handles you know where your when your seat goes up secures there so bye bye seat we're using those same bolts so you don't have to drill anything and it secures down here an existing um hole that you can just screw into and then here you do have to drill i saw a hole that was just beside it so this is like a quarter inch back and i just put a bolt in there and it's holding it better than not attaching it but the best would be to drill a hole which i will at some point so you can hang your accessories i got some crazy stuff up there the uh, extinguishers on the other side because you know if you need to get it quick you just want to get it through that back door you don't want to have to open up the slee rear bumper even though it's pretty quick so there's all that so i have a video comparing this barrier to a wits end which is uh oh, what's the company that makes it it's a company that makes it that wits end pretty much has the exclusive selling it so i compared that so you know if you subscribe to the channel or just look at my different videos i'll put it in the description below so i'll put the previous three videos so if you're if you're just coming on to this video and you didn't see part one part two part three i will put all those in the description including the how to paint your hijack lift and um, the comparison of those two barriers 
So all that good stuff. And soon, if you subscribe, I'm going to do a comparison between Black Mamba and Otis. So the diesel versus the gas, because I have a lot of experience driving both now. I'm going to share you my thoughts on both trucks. One last walk around. I mean, these trucks are timeless. And as you would know, if you have an 80 or if you plan to get one, you cannot go to the store, you cannot go to the gas station without someone wanting to talk to you about it. And I think it's because, you know, these were around, these, these were it. This was the SUV in the mid nineties, you know, and then Cadillac, Escalade and all the other guys got into the game, Lincoln and Infinity, but this was it. This, this is the bad boy. And you know what? All the other SUVs got everybody's attention, but these are the ones that are making a huge comeback because quality is quality and time reveals everything and time reveals that these trucks are phenomenal unless someone you know drove it in salt conditions and it rusted away unfortunately so all right i'm gonna pause for a second i'm gonna close this up i'll pop the um the hood and we'll give this thing a crank all right hood is up let's give her a crank before we jump in I was never a fan of these because in the US they're they're smaller and they're tinted and I'm like, ah, oh, that just looks ridiculous. But these ones are clear and they're big and I actually love them. I think on a diesel, these are just right. So pretty darn cool. All right, before we crank it, let's take a look at the engine. And from the moment I bought this, I never shampooed, cleaned this or anything. This is how she came, everybody. This is how I got it. This is clean. 24 valve. That's the magic. And, you know, this is the, um, the best for the 80 series. This is the best engine that they uh, came with in uh, Australia. The Australians will tell you that. The Japanese will tell you that. But here in the U.S., we just don't know it because we never got them. So we had nothing to compare them to or, you know, at the campfire on the off-road trail, we couldn't hear the one guy complain about his MPGs and then the other guy saying, what are you talking about? I didn't need the long range tank because I got diesel. It does have a timing belt, so you have to do your timing belt in this versus the FZJs. It's more the head gasket and valve cover. Well, valve cover gasket. You'll do that in, in any of the Land Cruisers. All right. Let's hear that symphony of an engine. And the other thing you'll notice in a uh, in a FZJ, you know, you got to crank it. Most cars with the starter, you have to crank it. This one, watch when I turn it, instant, instant start. Hers. Not like a kitten, but like a lion. Dual battery setup because it's a diesel. And on diesels, you just can go a three inch pipe all the way through. All right, what do you say we go for a drive? Other little cool things that just shows you Japanese. And then also on the back, um, I've got to research to see what more. I think it's like what the output is uh, since it's diesel. So 350 kg Godzilla, which is a 4.2 nat uh, naturally aspired engine. No turbo is 400. That's on my channel too. I love that truck. 
but this engine is just a little bit more powerful. 168 horsepower. So 168 horsepower um, in this compared to 212 with our HZJ 80s that we have here in the US and LX 450s, same, same engine. But as you can see, it's the same as uh, the US models. Just here, a pull, uh, upholstery, which I love, a little two-tone action going on there. You know, we got our same center console, just everything is flipped, right? Doubled in, you know, they got the same cup issue problem. You get this bar, the good old oh shit bar, but everything else is the same. So there's our, uh, that's a clean, agent fire uh, extinguisher there you always want clean agent you want you want just any fire extinguisher you know from your kitchen you'll damage your engine if you ever use it um, you'll ruin all your electrical then you'll wish the car burnt down so get a clean agent that's h um, h3r that i have uh, to me they're the best okay let's go for a ride what do you say same things here yeah i know doesn't have it it's got center but you know what this truck is too nice to crawl I think if I ever go anywhere the full-time the all-wheel drive is gonna be plenty good sometimes I get the turbo whistle I mean if I opened up and straight piped it I'm sure I could hear a lot more I could put another turbo on but I just love the way this just drives no lights on that's just my seat belt but you know even though it's 168 horsepower it's the torque that counts which the torque is uh let me go to the memory bank it's like 200 268 i think so 268 torque which puts it um way up there it's all about the torque this thing pulls like a freight train It's just so smooth. So my daughter who drives the uh, HJ61, so for people in America or Australia, that's an FJ62, but the Japanese high roof. So they call it an H. So H is always for diesel, right? It's an HJ61. And it, it's awesome. The power is very close to this one, I'd say. Um, but she said, boy, this, this vehicle just drives so smooth. And it doesn't even have, you know, high-end uh, shocks on it. Which, little hint, that's the next thing I think I'll be doing. I already have the Fox shocks, as you know, those are like, uh, not Fox, sorry, King shocks. I've got King shocks. Those are like, you gotta wait one year to get them. I've got them, I just have to have them installed. I just didn't wanna hold back this release video just for that. So, if, if uh, you hang tight, probably in a couple weeks, I'll, I'll do a little update of a couple extra things I wanna do on this truck maybe uh, some KC gravity lights up top and do like covers like those hella covers up front. We'll see, as long as it's not too much. But this thing gets right up. Oh yeah, plenty fast. You know, I'm not gonna win a drag race, but this is plenty fast, plenty powerful. And I noticed through going through like, um, passes like big inclines this diesel does pull amazing but I'll, I'll save all that for my uh comparison of a hdj and an fzj oh yeah and in a, that next video i'll do the uh that bonnet i got a video of this cool bonnet that comes out of the uk so i have an all black black ops with black stainless steel d-rings it's so cool I'll put it on this truck, but that's another day. So definitely subscribe if, you, if you're into Land Cruisers or like I said, other cool trucks and their owners, I wanna start doing that. So hit me up if you've got something that you think is, uh, is worthy of being shared. And you know, it's, it's gotta be old. Well not, you know, so there can be some new Land Cruisers like 200 series all done up, but uh, you know, old is great. When old is, uh, get a nice little wave from our biker. When, uh, when old is clean and looking good, it just can't be beat. 
you know, you go to the Cars and Coffee, and yeah, anybody with a big pocketbook can get a brand new McLaren, Ferrari, this or that, and okay, drive it there. To me, I, I walk down that aisle pretty quick. The aisles I like are the aisles that are showing the old school trucks, the one-offs, the unique, you know, so. All right, well, I'll hit pause. We're driving into the sun, and we'll do a quick little wrap-up. Got a little Jeep in front of us. I'll follow him in case I have to help him get out of trouble. All right, back home. So there she is. And just to share with you, I talked about uh, a car cover. I'll do another video uh, separately and I'll put it in the description once it's done. But you see Otis up here? So Otis right here that we're gonna do the comparison video. Otis has a car cover on it. And that car cover came when I got this truck. It came with this truck, that's Godzilla. That's an HZJ73. And it fits that one great, maybe a little large, but it fits this one perfect where, yeah, it's not gonna cover the rear tire and everything, but it's not a Land Cruiser top. It's a different type of vehicle top. So I will do a video sharing if your truck's outside like mine. I, I, can't, I can't get it in that garage anymore. It's, uh, it's too tall. So I'm sure if I took the roof rack, it would barely squeeze in. So, you know, you get it washed, it's clean. You don't want to just get all that dust and crap over all over it over time. So that car cover is awesome. I'll do a separate video on that here in due time. All right, so thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and being a subscriber. I'll keep the good content coming. Hit that like button and check down in the description for part one, two, and three if you never saw that. All right, happy trails, everybody. Again, thanks for watching, really appreciate it. It's, it's the subscribers that keep me going and wanting to share my passion for Land Cruisers uh, with you guys as well. All right, stay tuned for more content. Thanks.